Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Acacia. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine. But for people with medium to dark skin complexions, it can be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting La Roche-Posay's Anthelios SPF 50 Plus UVA UVB Ultra Fluid Invisible Finish long name, SVF to the test to see if it is dark skin approved. If you missed the last episode, I will link it up above in the cards. Make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you get updated every single time you put an SPF in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm rating this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind, and at the end, I'm going to be giving it an overall rating out of 10. Let's start with a little bit about the brand. So La Roche-Posay is a household name. It's owned by L'Oreal. It's a clinically focused brand, so it's great for anyone with problematic skin. This is, of course, music to my ears as someone who has suffered from acne for uh, five plus years, and I have extremely sensitive skin, so it's great for all these types of skin conditions. Um, their main ingredient that they really advertise is thermal water, and honestly, when I really first heard about this, I was like, water but after doing a little bit more research so basically this thermal water is found in a specific area in france and it's supposed to contain a high content of selenium and this type of ingredient it neutralizes the effect of free radicals on your skin so this is going to protect your skin against breaking down from these radicals in the air that causes uh, cell death that causes aging and wrinkles and so on and so forth so the fact that there's so much of this in the water is the reason why they're advertising with this um, thermal water their products are sold in drugstores all across North America, Canada, and America, as well as in places outside of the West as well. Um, they can also be found on Amazon too, so it's very accessible for pretty much anyone who wants to get their hands on them. Two more things to note, um, they are not cruelty free. So La Roche-Posay doesn't test on animals themselves, but they are owned by L'Oreal. So when required by law, they do pay and allow other companies to test their products and they do ship to China. So, you know, they do. And the last thing is that La Roche-Posay is not 100% vegan. Some of their products do contain ingredients that are derived from animals. So if that's something that you do not support and do not stand behind, then this may be something to look out for and maybe stay away from. So with the pros and cron, so with the po, so with the, po so with the pros and cons, I would give this brand an overall rating of 0.7. Okay, so the product does come in a sturdy packaging. It obviously has like a twist lock cap you screwed on. Um, it does have like a 
what do you call it, a, a nozzle. So the product is quite liquid and the nozzle does help give you some control. I haven't had an issue with it spilling out um, simply because it literally sits up in my vanity like this. But if you are traveling with this, it can get a bit messy just the way that it is. Pretty much every single one of La Roche-Posay's ultra fluid line look exactly like this which is a good thing as well as a bad thing because there's so many that they have i think there's at least four different types of ultra fluids that they have in the amphilios line so it's easy to get them all confused since legitimately the only thing different about them is like a tiny little word on the box so overall i would give the packaging 8.8 price and quantity. So this product does contain 50 milliliters of product, which is normal for pretty much every SPF that is sold in North America. And it does um, cost around $29 Canadian, depending on where you get it. Mine, I got mine from Shoppers Drug Mart. So the way that I kind of like to look at price and quantity is using a daily cost average. And this is basically looking at how much product you're getting, how much you're using every single time you use it, and how long it's going to last you. It will last you for 42 days and it will cost you 69 cents per use. When it comes to price and quantity, it's not enough to just look at one SPF. You do have to look at multiples. So once I film 10 videos, I will go ahead and do a recap video where I line them all together to truly see which one is worth the price and which one is the best. So stay tuned for that video by clicking the subscribe button as well as the bell so you get notified when I upload that video. For now, we're gonna give price and quantity a point. Now I am a stickler when it comes for ingredients. I love to dissect and break apart these products. There's only so much an ingredient list can tell you, of course, especially if you're someone who doesn't have a medical background or a cosmetic science background. I do not. I'm just a skincare enthusiast, but I am very enthused about the ingredients that I put on my face. Starting off with the pros. So it does have thermal water. It comes with a lot of emollients and a lot of conditioners like isopropyl mist, mist I'm not pronouncing that properly, um, disopropyl subecitate. One thing I do love about La Roche-Posay, and I will really hand that to them, is that they do focus on making everything calming and nothing is irritating to your skin. I'll put an asterisk right beside that little point there and we'll continue. Um, they also have something called perlite in here, which I actually had to look up. So this ingredient actually absorbs moisture without clogging your pores. So it gives you the mattifying finish. And I've definitely noticed that with the application of the product. We'll talk about that in application, but it does help to give a more mattified uh, finish to your skin. Those are the pros. Let's talk about the cons. It does contain alcohol denat as what seems to be its second ingredient. So first of all, it is one of those more harmful ingredients when it comes to the skin. Now, the reason why a lot of companies or cosmetic formulators behind these companies add alcohol denat into the product is because it's a texturizer. It helps it to feel better, it helps to apply better on the skin, it's a preservative, and it helps to enhance the penetration of the product. Sometimes there are certain ingredients in there that are also enhanced by using alcohol with them too. Now, with that being said, Alcohol, as long as it's applied at a low percentage, pretty much it will evaporate before it even has any time to damage your skin. But where alcohol is concerned, especially if you're using it on an everyday basis, and especially if you're going outside in the sun, in a sunscreen, is it can actually really dry out your skin. Now, over a long period of time, this can help to break down the natural moisture barrier that you have on your skin, and it will stop your skin from being able to fight off free radicals. And so when sun touches your skin, you're not gonna have any of that uh, reinforced skin barrier to fight it off for itself. So as you use this product, your skin is not gonna be able to fight off that free radical damage to protect itself from water loss effectively. That's why I don't like alcohol in leave-on products. That kind of taints my view of this product a little bit because I don't like this ingredient. Uh, this is a chemical SPF and all of the active ingredients that are included here are approved by the FDA. Um, chemical SPFs can be a little bit irritating if you do have really sensitive skin. So if you are someone who is currently going through breakouts in your face, I would say that this is not the one for you. This is more if when your skin has calmed down, my skin personally has calmed down and I haven't had irritation from this. It does contain this L'Oreal patented Mexoil XL. It's supposed to be a highly effective UV ray blocker for both UVA and UVB. It said that it's more effective than using zinc and titanium dioxide alone and it has similar protection rates using those two together so when they're combined. It also has a lot of UVA and UVB 
protectors like um, octisalate, octocrylene, avobenzo, and homosalate. Okay, great. You know, those are the classic UVA filters for US-based um, sunscreen. The best sunscreen that you're going to use is the one that you're actually going to use. So if you're okay with these ingredients and you don't have irritation to them, the more power to you. So all in all, it does have an SPF rating of 50 plus, which will protect your skin against 98% of the UVB radiation that is burning of the skin. As for UVA, in Canada, we don't really have like a, a PDD factor when it ranges from one to 16. Um, it's just kind of like looking at broad spectrum. This one doesn't necessarily say broad spectrum, but it does have the UVA um, protection on here and the ingredients do have that as well. So um, you can kind of assume with great confidence that this will be protecting your skin against UVA as well. So overall with the pros and the cons of the ingredients, I will give this an overall rating of 0 0.6. Application. So as we saw in the video, this sunscreen goes on like a dream. It just glides on the skin. It does not take a long time to rub in either. It just soaks up really nicely. And this is definitely because of that alcohol denat. And then when it finishes on the skin, it looks a little bit shiny uh, when you first put it on. But after a couple of minutes, it dries down to an almost like skin-like matte, not matte, but like a skin-like texture. It's not greasy at all but it does have a slight grain to it, which you'll notice on your fingers. You don't quite notice it if you're rubbing your face or anything like that, but you will notice it a little bit on your fingers. I don't really mind it because it goes away, but just something to note. So in terms of the application, I will give this a point. I do like this quite a, quite a bit. Finish. So it does, like I said, have a very nice skin-like finish. It's not heavy, it's not greasy once it dries down. I don't feel like I need a moisturizer afterwards, which is something interesting because recently I've been experiencing a really dry patch in my skin. I do have a combination of acne prone skin, but recently it's been more on the dry side. Um, but with this one specifically, I haven't noticed me needing a moisturizer underneath. If you do have oily skin, I think this will be just fine for you. If you are someone with more dry skin, um, give it a try and see how it goes. Depending on how dry your skin is, you may need like a gel moisturizer underneath. The one that I use right now is from Neutrogena. Um, they have a gel moisturizer, which I love. If you haven't tried that already, please do. It is amazing. It does also have like a primer-like finish to it. So it's kind of tacky once you put it on, which I found to be a really good base for makeup it has the same finish that a primer would one thing that was brought to my attention from some of the comments was people were wanting to know what it looks like after you exercise now to be honest my exercise regimen is not that consistent although it should be I'm, I'm trying so I did um, wearing this sunscreen on my face and I didn't find that the um, sweat or the heat on my skin did anything to the product. It didn't leave any milky residue and running down of the products on my face. I really do enjoy the way that this wore while I was exercising too. So overall, the finish is going to get 8.8. .8. Because of its super water-like, lightweight texture, I did not have any issues applying this or reapplying it back on my skin after a couple of hours. I applied this twice. Um, as well as I did apply this over makeup. And I didn't find any pilling with the product, the dry one that's on the face and the liquid that comes on top. And I didn't find any weirdness or any balling of the product on top of makeup either. And I showed you guys one side reapplying over makeup and then without, there was basically no difference. And so I really do enjoy how this reapplies on the skin. But this is going to be getting eight point for me. I am very happy to say that this product leaves absolutely no white cast on the skin. It is a chemical SPF, so that is to be expected. Um, yeah, nothing, no complaints there. So this is a very short category for me. It's going to get a point. <laughs> now, where fragrance is concerned, like I said, a lot of La Roche-Posay's products, they are formulated without fragrance because they are very clinically focused for people with problematic skin. However, there are a few products that they do have that have perfume in them. This one specifically, I went on two different websites and got two different answers with this product. So on one website, it did say that they have fragrance, aka perfume in their product. And on the Shoppers Drug Mart side, which is where I got mine from, it said that there was no fragrance. So I think maybe just look at the ingredient list and see which one you're getting. There may have been different formulations of this product. And I know, like I said, that there's a lot of, of different sunscreens that they have in the exact same bottle. So just kind of look at it closely and just make sure that the one that you're getting doesn't have uh, fragrance in it. I'm going to be basing this review off of the one from Shoppers Drug Mart, um, their ingredient list, because that's where I got this one from. And that one says there's no fragrance in it. With that being said, it does kind of have a slight signature scent from 
a lot of La Roche Posay's Amphelios line. They do have this sunscreen smell, um, but it's very faint. It's not overpowering. I haven't had any irritation to it. I haven't been sneezing because of it because I do have allergies. When things are really too fragrant, it gives me um, allergies and a stuffy nose. You'll find that it will be on your fingers. You'll smell it, but after a while, it just goes away. So I don't have a, a problem with the scent that is in there. Overall, I'm going to give this a 0.7. Flashback. Now this is a category that I contemplated just taking out of these reviews, but you guys really want it to be there. And my reasoning behind it is because the times when you're going to need flash photography, you really don't need to be wearing SPF anyways. The only time you're gonna need it is when it's dark outside and you do not need to wear sunscreen past just about six o'clock or four to six o'clock. That's kind of when the, the sun goes down. So you don't really have any of that radiation coming from the sun that will be harmful to your skin. But regardless, I did go ahead and take a photo in the evening so I could show you guys the flash photography. There is no flashback with this product. So if you do plan on wearing your um, sunscreen, when you're going to be taking that flash photography, your skin will be fine and your photos will be fine as well. This will get a point for me. This product will be getting an overall rating of 8.6 out of 10. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below and let me know, have you ever tried anything from La roche -Posay? I would love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you, lovely ladies and gents, in my next one. Bye!